Well, you guys know that this is a follow-up video to my previous RE9 video talking about the new rumors and all that. However, something that I feel like that might be overshadowed in the list is that a playtest of the game has happened months before the Leon playtest, from what the info was supposedly said. Now, again, with my disclaimer, there is a chance this could all be fake to get us going again, but the chances of it being real are there as well, so it's best if we keep expectations and optimism low, and take everything in this video with a big ass grain of salt. Now in June, I ended up getting a message from someone talking about an early test build of RE9. Not the messenger, but he knew the playtester. Why did he decide to message me of all people? I have no idea to this day. He shared a lot of details, but I was really hesitant to make a video on it altogether, because it was so weird and vague. But ever since a few days ago where the new list of rumors surfaced, it was hard for me to contain myself, and those had a very deep connection to the ones previously shared months ago. But I might as well share this with you guys involving something in early July, as he sent me this on June 10th. Here's the exciting part. The source mentioned that he or she heard from some friends of them, who are also playtesters in San Francisco, that Capcom is preparing some kind of new showcase, focused on Resident Evil in the end of June slash July. Now initially, I didn't think of this as anything crazy and ultimately thought nothing was happening. But fast forward to July 1st, we get something we obviously knew, but it was confirmation nonetheless. A new Resident Evil. It was really difficult to figure out what to do after 7, but I found it. And to be honest, it feels substantial. Even though it wasn't entirely focused on Resident Evil, but more so on Dead Rising, this moment made me think, maybe this guy has something he knows about this game, and maybe some small insider info. Not a lot, but something. He then links me to a Reddit account or post, where his source is now publicly posting the info. Now again, it's best if you take this with a grain of salt, but I am going to read into this in every post he has made so far. I honestly don't expect people to believe this, but I can't contain my excitement for what's to come. I tested Resident Evil 9, and I'm going to tell you the things I saw. Personally, I think this anonymous network is the best way to do this. It's not the first time I've done this. I tested some REA builds a few years ago with other people under a confidentiality contract. Come on, this is normal in the industry, guys. I'm not saying it in a superior tone, but contextualizing it, and I also don't know how much of it will happen. I tested this product on seven people. Based on the information I received, these tests also took place in Japan, long before my session. It's not a surprise since Biohazard is very popular there. The build I played actually has Jill Valentine as the protagonist, and lasted about two hours. After this period, you had to leave the controller at the table. According to the initial screen, RE9 Apocalypse is Jill's first solo mission since her return to the BSAA, I believe after Death Island. After those events, the character was on a support team suggested by Chris. That is the reason she is not in RE7 and Village. It's the most I read in the instructions because the loading was very fast. It takes place in an abandoned hospital, whose name I'm not even going to try to write. From the letters on the walls, I believe it's in the interior of Russia. Jill was looking for clues in a secret BSAA facility. Chris assists in the mission, sometimes by contacting a communicator, similar to Resident Evil 4 Remake. Enemies that are present in this build are zombies, a type of bipedal creature with teeth on its belly that make a sound that can stun the player and a new variant of the hunter. Jill wears a uniform similar to her outfit in the Revelations 1 flashback, but black. Her hair is short, her face is based on RE3. She's beautiful. Available weapons, pistol, shotgun, and a knife. The knife has a defensive item returns just like an RE2. The shotgun's impact is even more brutal and perfected than an RE4. The game's atmosphere is similar to RE2. The gore is heavier, especially when you shoot a zombie. Movement based on RE2 will with improvements, but it is not as free as in RE4. Something between those two games, honestly. I didn't notice any blood on Jill as she shot the zombies. I can't confirm if it was a build error. She remained clean the entire time. Next comes my favorite part of the demo. A mutation based on a terrifying goat man acts as Jill's stalker in the game. The sound of his hooves and macabre, if I am pronouncing that right, animalistic groans can be heard throughout the hospital. I could describe his appearance as a bipedal humanoid similar to a half goat man, completely dissolved in his own skin, jeweling a black substance, and glowing yellow eyes. The game seems to take place in very closed environments. In the build, we had to get a car to open the west wing of the hospital. I can't say that the hospital will be the main setting, but I believe so. Long corridors, many locked doors, and disgusting zombies. It was amazing. To close this topic, I don't expect everyone to believe this, but I'm happy to share while keeping my identity a secret and satisfying the curiosity of some of you. I hope the announcement doesn't take long. LMAO. That was posted on May 4th of 2024, a month after the rumored Jill playtest. 
And nearly six months later, or should I say five, we end up getting this. I can't contain my disgust with so much misinformation about RE9. Here are some more details about the game. Nothing big but the truth, different from what people have been giving you lately. I tested the game on two occasions within a few months between the two sessions and everything indicates that it is a Jill game about Jill and her mission. Unless I tested a separate part of the game, Leon is not in RE9. At least nothing indicated that to me. Honestly, I think the hospital is the main setting as I mentioned. It is very large and has many locked doors. It doesn't seem like a transition part of the game, but rather the game itself. One of the few documents found in the build mentions experiments conducted by a multi-million dollar company that were spread throughout Europe. It seemed like a report. I can't say if it was internal. I didn't see any option for first person available. The game is very fluid and seems to be full third person. I don't think there will be a way to switch this. There is no mention of Leon during the hospital session. The game has a chess system and a typewriter, but both do not work properly in the test. There are save rooms, still without music, at least for me. The inventory is very similar to RE2 2019, and the game pauses when you open it. The difference is in the slots, which are round and not square. The flashlight is automatic, they insist on this apparently. Green, blue, and red herbs are in the game. I didn't see anything about yellow herbs. I found gunpowder but I couldn't create ammunition. I simply can't combine them in the inventory, possibly a bug. Anyway, I hope this helps you. Honestly, as I said before, I don't expect you to believe me, but be careful with the information that is circulating on the internet so as not to create expectations about multiple characters in this game. I didn't see anything that indicates this, and much less Leon. And also forgot to mention, Resident Evil 9 is called Resident Evil 9 Apocalypse. On the loading screen there was a preliminary Resident Evil 9 logo, and just below the word Apocalypse. Dust Gollum has said that all the info with Jill, the hospital, and Go Man is fake. Any response to this? What answer could I give to someone who swore to an entire community that Crocodile wouldn't be an RE2 remake? Who also stated with almost certainty a plot that didn't happen in Village. Apparently he's pretty out of date on RE9. Wait for the announcement in the game. You'll see the hospital anyway. Honestly, between you and him, I like to believe you're on the money. If all this turns out to be true, it'll be great to see him sulk and proven wrong for everyone to see. I don't have anything against it directly, but I think people have been disappointed a few times. The reason I'm exposing these tests and making two posts about it clearly and lowering expectation regarding things I haven't seen is precisely for that reason. I only said what I really saw and what I really did, nothing more than that. I'm not going to fill this balloon of expectations so that it explodes in your faces. I'm looking forward to everyone seeing the game. Since then, someone ended up linking the Residents of Evil video that ended up starting the rumors of the RE9 test builds pretty much a day ago. Are you the unnamed playtester that mentioned in the video? No. I can only confirm the things I've said so far. I didn't send this material to the content creators. What I can say is that I played Jill's part in the hospital as I said before. I don't know many story details as mentioned in the video, and I didn't participate in any more testing than what I mentioned. As I said, I didn't see Leon in the game in the part I tested. Well, there you have it. Somebody else other than Ludus Fix sent those playtest details to Biohazard to Classified. Something felt weird about this. In those long posts, he said he playtested parts of RE8, which made me want to search for RE8 leaks before the game was revealed, and I found something... very intriguing. A Reddit thread from three years ago, talking about all the leaks and rumors of RE Village from true to false, and on January 28, 2020, I found something. Courtesy of an article posted by Biohazard to Classified, we receive our first rumors about the next installment in the series. The information comes as a direct follow-up to the previous claims by Dust Gollum, basically stating that these claims are false, while sending in some of their own insider information through the site's anonymous tip line. The interesting pieces of information are as follows. Ethan will be returning as a playable character. RE8 was tested last year. It will not be called Resident Evil 8, but will have a clever title. The game will be featured in first person like RE7. Gameplay starts in a village leading up to a castle. The environment will be rural, snowy, and mountainous, possibly Europe. There are also wolf-like creatures that will attack the player in certain areas. Chris Redfield will also be returning in some capacity, etc, etc. And a vast majority, if not every single one of these, were true. And when I looked up these leaks onto YouTube, I found a Residents of Evil video talking about them. And it gives off very similar vibes to the stuff that we have received about RE9. From Biohazard to Classified, sending them to JJ, and even from game details to plot, story, and everything. It all seems to be lining up and there might be a consistent pattern. 
who exactly was the source? Was it the same playtester that posted the Reddit thread, or the one about the Leon playtest? That we have no idea about. But something feels really weird. Even though that we ended up getting that stuff, a few months later, Resident Evil Village ended up getting revealed. Particularly, in June 11th. Even though these rumors can be fake, it's hard to not think about a pattern that has slowly but surely emerged, and we are very shortly away from the Game Awards in a PlayStation State of Play rumored to be around the time or week before that said event. Now, this is where things get turned into a fantasy dream or whatever, but based on the information we have gotten, and if somehow, some way, this information turns out to be real, Resident Evil 9 may go something like this. Resident Evil 9 is going to be a single-player two-story campaign featuring Leon Kennedy and Jill Valentine. Chris Redfield is Jill's support, and Barry will be Leon's in Hunnigan-like roles. Jill and Leon don't know about each other being on the island, which may lead to a potential meetup later on in the game, or they already have been notified of each other just on separate missions and goals. The main villain of this game is Mr. Simon, who from what I believe is the leader behind the connections, and the founder of the organization Brandon Bailey being either not there or dead. The main enemies will be zombified humans with interesting features on them, including a moon tattoo engraved on their arms or chests, but may act like Ganados. But potentially speaking, Ganado-like enemies and zombies with new features and strengths can both exist in this game, giving the game small but good enemy variety for now. The other enemies could be new variations of the hunter, and stalker enemies including a goat man that seems very terrifying, but could be the boss of the abandoned hospital if anything. The game will be in third person, and no option for first person doesn't exist. The island location is in the Europe and Russia range, that features a hospital, caves, small houses, temple, factories, and many more settings. Rose is included in this game, but in a unique way similar to Jake Mueller in RE6, their blood being the antibodies to the game's virus. The Mutamycete will be concluded along with Evelyn. Leon and Jill will both be infected. The gameplay features key elements of RE2 and 4 Remake, but no merchant is known about as of now. Nicole Tompkins will most likely return as Jill. Jeff Shine will most likely come back for Chris. As for Leon, it's up in the air between Nick Apostolides and Matthew Mercer. I also hope for Barry's Revelations 2 voice actor to reprise his role. The game takes place in 2025. Leon and Jill are in very serious tactical gear. Leon's DSO gear being similar to RE Damnation, and Jill's BSAA outfit similar to Lost in Nightmares. Inventory is very similar to RE2 Remake. Rosemary Winters will be 4 years old. If she does appear in the game, where will Mia be? No clue. Will Ada appear and meet up with Leon again? We have no idea. I really hope with all my heart that this is the last bit of RE9 leaks or rumors that I have to cover. If this is a big troll job, I can only shame myself and not them, because they would have pulled off a masterclass in doing so. But like I said, some of this reminds me way too much of those RE8 leaks in the past. If I could give any advice to you guys, bundle up for December. The Game Awards and the rumored state of play will be there. And if it appears, let's hope it's something like this. Nakanishi-san will do his job greatly in the horror department. But if this game does not appear there, this game will be shrouded in more mystery than it already is. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like on it to help it reach the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to the channel for more RE content like this in the near future. I appreciate all the love that we have gotten recently and officially surpassed 9,000 subscribers. Now, the 10k goal is officially underway. As always, I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace out, and much love.